and welcome back to Watercolor 101. And in this episode, we're finally, yes, we have all our tools and supplies ready to go. So today we're gonna start painting, yay! I'm so excited. So if you're new to this and you haven't watched those beginning videos, um, you might wanna check that out. I have a playlist, which I'll put at the end of this video as well, so it'll take you through all of the videos. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So we're going to begin to play with our paints. We're not really actually gonna paint a picture yet, we're just gonna play. The reason why it's important to play with your paints is to know and to figure out, if you do this, what are they gonna do? So we're gonna tackle some of the bigger reasons that people who don't like watercolor or find watercolor hard because watercolor does this for them. And I'm gonna show you why it does this and uh, so that when we actually get into a painting, you'll know to kind of keep a lookout for that. So the first thing people find difficult with watercolor is that they paint with watercolor just with paint. They think watercolor is supposed to be like normal paint and it's not. Um, you can, like I could paint a nice beautiful sunshine here, yay! And I could use my watercolor paints just like normal paints, um, but that's not what they're, they're solely meant for. I'm going to get a nice vibrant color with this and it looks great, um, but there's so much more that you can do with this. Another thing that they'll find challenging with watercolor paints is bleed through. So they'll paint a beautiful sun, but then they'll go to add their blue sky here, and when their watercolors touch, it begins to bleed through. And you might get a really cool effect, but it might not be what you want. You're gonna get this bleeding going on there. And people find that really frustrating because they can't get their watercolors to stay put. And that's because watercolor is exactly that. It's water. And so wherever water can go, the, it takes the pigment of the paint along with it. So I'm not gonna get this really crisp line, especially if I go back and add a little bit more water here, you're gonna find that it, it'll bleed through. Dun, dun, dun. And so people find that frustrating. So now they have a green sky and an orange blob or something. And they're like, no, nah, I just wanted it to be a, yeah. It's a mess. It's because that's what watercolor is going to do. But this could be something that you would want it to do. So why would you want your colors to bleed together? Well, that's what we call a gradient. When colors bleed together, it gives us what we want of a gradient. So it may be something that you don't want, but knowing that that's what it does, you can create something that you do want by using the water to work for you. So this wouldn't work so much on a sun and blue sky, but say I wanna get a really nice contrasting leaf. By adding that nice sunspot in there, I can get it to really make it look cool. And get a nice texture and values. And so it's not just that plain green getting lots of different shades in there. And that's the fun part about watercolor. All right, so another thing people find challenging it with watercolor is that when it moves on the brush, the brush will pick up water, and when you touch it, now you have this blob there, and you're like, no, I just want you to smooth out. No, it's just smooth. Ah, oh, no, it's smooth. Okay, so the reason it does this is water is absorbent. So it's going to absorb into whatever needs it most. So if your paintbrush is wetter than your, so here I have some red paint on here, and I have it really loaded up with water. So the paint on the paper is not gonna absorb into the brush because the brush has more water. The water from the paintbrush, along with the paint, is going to then flow into the paper. So here you go, see, I'm gonna go like this, and it's gonna drag this along here. Dun, 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 dun. And you'll see that paint is leaving my paintbrush and going on to the paper. It's going there. All right. That's pretty, pretty much everyone understands that technique. But what if I put a lot of water on here, so there's a lot of water on that, and I dry my brush off. So now my brush has very little water. I've dried it off, and I'm gonna start pulling that water off. So now when I drag this, 
it's not leaving paint, it's pulling paint up. That's because the water is now absorbing into my paintbrush and it's pulling the pigment along with it. So you might want to go over this and go, oh no, I've got this, I, I lost my red mark and now I've got this white. This, this could be a problem. But if you can use this technique knowing this is what the paint's going to do, now you know that now I can so I pull my colors up. So if I have too much color on my paper, I can use this technique to lift color up. So here I have my rag, and you know, a lot of times you won't ever see me doing this because I do it off camera, but let me zoom back a little bit. I'll have my brush really close and I'll dry my brush and then I'll pick some more color up, dry it off, pick some color up, dry it off, pick my color up. And this really helps if I don't want that intense of a color or say I made a mistake and I want to clean it up a little bit. I can go around here and I can scrub that and it's going to be picked up by my brush. I can clean up my edges a little bit. So the things that cause problems are just cause and effect. If you do this to your paint and your brushes, this is what's going to happen. But it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can be a good thing. So here I'm adding a whole bunch more water here. My paintbrush is still really wet, so it's not gathering, it's just reactivating the color and smearing it. But once I dry my paintbrush off on my paper, or on my towel, then I go back up. Now you'll see it's picking that paint up. So say this line is too, I don't want that dark of a line. I wanna smooth it out. I'm gonna add a little bit of water here. I'm just gonna dab that in, reactivate my paint, and I'm gonna pull it up. And every single time I'm dabbing that excess paint off on my brush. Your towel is just as an important tool as your paintbrush. The amount of water that is on your brush really determines how much paint is gonna be on your paper or taken off your paper. So you can see, our little sun and sky turning into a leaf, turning into something else, is really morphing and is uh, has changed a lot of by adding and, and subtracting all this paint. Now if we let this dry and I brought something up next to it, you're going to see that it won't bleed into this as long as it's dry. If I did it right now and I put it a color over here, it's going to bleed into here because there's still a little bit of water and it's still a little wet here. There's a couple different ways to tell how much water is on your paper. Um, there is the shiny method, which let me see if I can get it to where you guys can see it. I'm going to use a little bit of tainted water so that you guys can see. Alright, so shiny water, if I can get my lighting. Oh, there we go. See that really good reflection I got going on there? That means my paint, my water on my paper is really, really wet. That means adding any kind of color is going to cause that color to really fan out really fast wherever that water goes. So that means that there's a layer of water sitting on top of my paper that the watercolor paper has not yet absorbed it and so this paint can go swimming. It swims on this little thin layer of water and I can move it around and play with it and all that because it's really really wet. Now if I take a little bit of water and I brush it on there, maybe I pull a little bit of that off I let it sit for a little bit. Let me see if I can get it where you guys can see it. Now it's, you can kind of see a little bit. It's kind of a fuzzy wetness. It's not shiny, like, like water flowing in there. It's just damp looking. And this is going to, when it gets to this point, when I lay my colors, it's going to feather, but it's going to feather very slowly. So you'll see that this paint here didn't zoom out like this one did. It's just, it's feathering softly. That means most of my water has absorbed into my paper, and so now it's just the little crevices in the in the paper that's allowing the paint to spread. So it's gonna get a really soft, feathery look. But it's gonna still be a little bit controllable. If I were to add some water to this, boom, you'd see that my paint would then begin to spread wherever that water goes. It's gonna spread as I add more water to it. just going to go out. And you'll see I can keep complete control of where my paint's going because I control the water. Control the water and you control your paint. Even though this is really, really wet, I'm only allowing the paint to go here because all this other paper is dry. Kind of a think of it as building a corral for wild horses. 
that happen to be colored pieces of paint. And wherever your corral is, is where your water is. And wherever your water is, is where your wild paint horses can go. So you can get these really cool techniques and control as long as you remember that your paper has to be dry and your, your paints will then go wherever it is. So let's see over here. See, we still have a really good bubble of water right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if I can show you. Oh, here's my sunshine, oh, my sunshine. There it is. So you can see it's really wet in this corner here. And over in the far corner, you have kind of more of a foggy. So if I were to tap down some color here, you see it's gonna stay pretty close to where it wants to go. If I tap it here, of course it's gonna mix with the black, but it mixes really fast. But you can get a nice marbly effect. So this is why it's important, just to play with it. Play putting water down on your paper, adding your color and just tapping those colors in there, see what it's going to do. You don't have to paint anything. I have this really weird looking, I don't know what this is. You tell me in the comments what you think this is. I don't know, it looks maybe like a heart with veins or some sort of cool fish. You know, like those really cool fish, I don't know. Or some sort of monster. Now let's look up here. This part here is almost dry. What would happen if I put paint on that? So let's see, let's get some more blue here. And if I were to tap in some blue, because it's dry, it's not going anywhere. Let's see, so it gets down here a little bit. It's a little bit wet down here. So it's gonna spread out a little bit more there. But I can add in more color up here. And it's gonna stay there. But again, if I wanna lift it up, get my brush, dry it off, and I can then start, because I have a slightly damp brush, I can go in here and create that gradient. And again, every time my brush moves off and goes this way, I'm wiping my brush off, cleaning it up. Because if I didn't, if I didn't do that and I went to do this, I would just keep on pushing the paint out and I couldn't get that gradient. So, but if I wipe that, if I wipe that paint off, then I can lighten it up as I go. So painting with watercolor isn't always about adding more and more and more and more paint. It's about controlling it, adding some paint, then removing some, adding more, adding more water, taking water away. It's this dance. <laughs> yes. All right, I could continue painting on this for a long time, having fun with this, but I will end this video here. And I wanna see your crazy practice sheet. I know it will look something, you know, crazy like this, will have no meaning or purpose, but take a photo of it and post it on my Facebook page. If you don't want anyone else to see it, you can send it to me in a private message on Facebook but I would love to see your practices. So do that and let me see. I look forward to seeing you guys again next week, Watercolor Wednesday, we're gonna learn now. We're gonna take these techniques and start putting them together to actually make something not as weird as this. So yeah. All right, thanks guys. Join me again next time. Hit that subscribe button, leave me comments. Thanks. Talk to you later. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>